My Lord Inquisitor, I was delighted to receive your summons, and even more so, to be able to submit this record for usage in your organization. Let it, and indeed our further cooperation, stand as a testament to the cooperation of all Imperial organizations during these trying times. Your servant, as ever, Oculus Imperia. The Legion of the Damned is a name given to a mysterious force of flame-wreathed, bone-clad space marines, who are known to suddenly and unexpectedly lend their aid to Imperial forces whenever all hope seemed lost. For centuries, the Legion of the Damned have taken part in some of the most violent and intense conflicts to occur throughout the Imperium, appearing unbidden and without warning in order to unleash the Emperor's wrath upon the enemies of man, before mysteriously vanishing once their task is complete. Such conflicts not only include the Siege of Cadia during the course of Abaddon the Despoiler's 13th Black Crusade, but the Legion's warriors would also manifest alongside the mysterious entity known as the Sanguinor in order to aid the Blood Angels and their successor chapters against the forces of Hive Fleet Leviathan during the devastation of Baal. Warriors of the Legion have also been known to seemingly appear at multiple locations simultaneously in order to stand against the Imperium's foes. Throughout the events of the Noctis Aeterna, when the guiding light of the Astronomicon had been temporarily snuffed out by the onset of the Cicatrix Maledictum, the Legion of the Damned would appear upon Armageddon, Antagonis, and a hundred other planets in order to battle against the forces of Chaos. In battle, the Legion of the Damned makes extensive use of incendiary weapons such as flamers, heavy flamers, and multi-melters in order to bathe all who stand against them in the fires of the Emperor's Judgment. Even the standard-issue bolt weaponry wielded by the Legion's warriors is known to ignite the very air around them with every shot, punching great holes within even the thickest of armor plating. While these damned legionnaires may outwardly appear to be little more than typical space marines, albeit more flamboyant and theatrical in appearance, the warriors of the Legion are known to be utterly implacable, demonstrating a resilience that even surpasses that of a traditional Astartes. In addition, every member of the Legion moves with economical precision, making sure that every shot taken or every strike made against their foes results in a kill. Yet beyond even this, the Legion's warriors display a number of traits that can only be described as supernatural. While the Legionnaires are regularly bathed in ethereal flame, their armor remains as black as night, with not even the harshest and most intense forms of light being capable of fully illuminating their forms. Despite this, some members of the Legion have been recorded as becoming blazing infernos, fighting with an unparalleled ferocity before finally vanishing. Indeed, whenever the Legion of the Damned manifests upon the battlefield, their presence is often more than enough to turn the tide of battle in the Imperium's favor. And yet, for all their ferocity, the Legion's warriors perform their duty in total silence, shouting no battle cries or prayers to the Emperor, with the only sounds they make being the chatter of weapons fire and the grinding of armor servos. Because of these various supernatural traits demonstrated by the Legion, many Imperial scholars have attempted to discern whether these warriors are truly men at all, or something else entirely. So just what exactly is the Legion of the Damned? One of the most popular hypotheses regarding it is that they are surviving remnants of a Space Marine chapter known as the Firehawks. The Firehawks were a chapter that were established as part of the 21st, or Cursed, founding, who would go on to partake in numerous conflicts over the course of their existence, with the most notable of which being the Badab War. Approximately 50 years after the culmination of this conflict, the Firehawks would make a warp jump from the Perneus system and set course for the Crow's World subsector, which was being subjected to countless Drukhari slave raids. However, despite such a journey being estimated to take no more than 12 hours to accomplish, the Firehawks would never reach their destination, having apparently become lost within the depths of warp space. Twenty years later, Firehawks would officially be declared lost to the Imperium, with the bell of lost souls tolling a total of 1,000 times and a black candle being lit in Terra's Chapel of Fallen Heroes. Some have even suggested that the Officio Assassinorum were ultimately responsible for the chapter's disappearance, although there is little to support this claim. And yet, 
Many Imperial scholars believe that the Firehawks were not truly destroyed, but were instead transformed by their prolonged experience within the warp, which had simultaneously killed them and yet kept them somehow alive. According to the 6th edition Legion of the Damned Codex, a report would be commissioned by none other than the High Lords of Terra themselves in an attempt to discern the truth behind the Legion. This document, known within official records as Quadrimesta's Thesis of Perpetual Martyrdom, suggests that the warriors of the Legion are infected with some sort of warp-spawned contagion, which affects both the body and the soul. This unnatural affliction will then go on to bestow a series of, for lack of a better term, psychic gifts upon those infected, merging their mind, body, and soul with the raw energies of chaos itself, explaining as to how the Legion's warriors are able to display their various supernatural abilities. The thesis then goes on to speculate that those afflicted with such a contagion, knowing that such a condition is ultimately fatal to both their physical and spiritual essence, will seek to isolate themselves from the rest of the Imperium in order to prevent such a taint from being passed onto innocent civilians. The infected will then seek to continue punishing the enemies of man while they are still capable of doing so, before entering the final stages of the disease, known as pyromortis, where the infected succumbs to an intense form of spontaneous combustion, destroying both their body and soul in a roaring inferno. However, thanks to the fickle, warp-spawned nature of this contagion, those that succumb to pyromortis are able to be reborn from the energies of the warp after an indeterminate period of time. Similar to how demons that are banished from the material realm can eventually reconstitute their essence into a physical form once more. With this in mind, if the Firehawks had indeed contracted some type of warp-spawned infection, then it is certainly reasonable to suggest that the Chapter's warriors may have taken it upon themselves to unleash the Emperor's wrath upon all of mankind's foes, before succumbing to the effects of Pyromortis. It is even possible that the black and bone-clad appearance of the Legion's warriors is, in and of itself, a symbolic gesture made by the Firehawks to visually represent that they are the Emperor's vengeance, in a manner similar to how the warriors within the Death Company of the Blood Angels chapter will paint red markings upon black armor to symbolize the stigmata of their Primarch Sanguinius. The main problem with the idea that the Legion of the Damned being formed purely from the remnants of the Firehawks is in regards to when the chapter became lost, specifically. The Firehawks would become lost within the warp sometime around 963 M41, while the Legion of the Damned would be officially documented within Imperial records as far back as 006 M40, during the Pyro Cataclysm of Villadad Prime, which would take place over 900 years prior to the disappearance of the Firehawks. As such, this would initially appear to debunk the notion that the Firehawks were to have any sort of connection to the Legion. That being said, however, the tides of the warp are well known to distort the very passage of time itself, and are capable of sending travelers backwards, and as well as forwards, through time in rare instances. The most notable example of this, as detailed within the 4th edition Orc Codex, is shown with the forces of Wa Grizzlets, who would transition back to the Material Realm, to a point in time just prior to when the Orcs made their initial jump into warp space. As such, it is still possible that the Firehawks are connected to the Legion in some way. Another possibility is that the Legion of the Damned are in fact, for lack of a better term, Imperial Demons. Since the Emperor's internment into the life support systems of the Golden Throne following the events of the Horus Heresy, and the subsequent establishment of the Adeptus Ministorum, the chief religious body within the Imperium, the Emperor of Mankind would become worshipped by the bulk of humanity as the one true god. Given the Emperor's own unparalleled psychic abilities, in conjunction with the rise of the cult Imperialis, it's certainly hard to argue against the notion that the Emperor has indeed become a godlike being in his own right. Despite his physical form being crippled and broken, the Emperor continues to wage his eternal war against the ruinous powers within the depths of the warp, using his immense psychic gifts to defend humanity from the ever-encroaching tides of chaos. With this in mind, it seems fairly reasonable to assume that the Emperor would use his powers to create his own legion of demonic warriors in order to aid him in metaphysical combat. 
After all, many types of demonic entities, though by no means all, are formed from the very power and essence of their particular god, and as a result, often display various traits that are associated with their master. For example, great unclean ones sport an appearance that is said to be identical to that of the plague god Nurgle, while demonettes boast a form that is symbolic of the androgyny of Slaanesh, the god of hedonism and pain. Since the Emperor was at least somewhat responsible for the engineering of the warriors of the Legiones Astartes over 10,000 years ago, it makes some degree of thematic sense that his demonic minions would adopt the form of space marines. If the Legion of the Damned are truly demonic entities, then this would also explain as to how the Legion's warriors are able to suddenly manifest and disappear without warning, by being summoned directly from the depths of warp space. The fact that the Legion has been described by some as manifesting from a sulfurous cloud of flame could potentially support this notion, as these clouds of flame could very well be the Legion tearing its way through the fabric of reality. The idea that uh, the damned Legionnaires are some form of demonic entity is partially supported within the book The Fall of Cadia. During the Siege of Cadia, Belisarius Call, the Archmagus Dominus of the Adeptus Mechanicus, along with the Necron Lord Trazin the Infinite, would succeed in activating the artifacts known as the Cadian Pylons, in order to drive back a warp rift that threatened to engulf the entire world. The null field emitted by the Pylons would not only cause the warp rift to gradually recede, but the various demons that fought as part of Abaddon's forces, including those that had been bound to possessed Chaos Space Marines and Demon Engines, would be dragged back into the depths of warp space. However, it was not just the various entities in service to the ruinous powers that would be driven from the world, as the Legion of the Damned would also succumb to the effects of the Pylons, being banished from the material realm further supporting the notion that the damned legionnaires are indeed some type of demonic creature, or at the very least, some other form of warp-spawned entity. Not only this, but if the legion's warriors are indeed demonic in nature, then this would also explain the various supernatural traits and characteristics that they exhibit, as many demons would also display a number of unique abilities or other peculiarities such as the liquid metal blood and metallic flesh of the Juggernauts of Khorne, or the ability to split into two smaller entities, as demonstrated by Zinchian horrors. An additional piece of circumstantial evidence, as shown within the 6th edition Legion of the Damned Codex, comes from the Eldari Autarch Elune Starshaper, who states outright that the Legion's warriors, despite sporting a form reminiscent to a space marine, are clearly demonic in nature, as shown with the following quote. They are creatures born of the warp, that much even a child could divine. That they wear the shape of mankind's vaunted defenders is a matter as immaterial as the warriors themselves. They are demons, and they must be brought low, just as with all their malefic kind. Given how familiar the Eldari have become with demonic entities during their struggles against their great enemy Slaanesh, it would seem fairly reasonable for a race to know just if the foes they face are demonic in nature, although it is admittedly possible that Starshaper's own claim regarding the Legion could be inaccurate. In addition, those that succumb to the effects of the Pyromortis Contagion, which, as mentioned earlier, binds both the mind and body within the energies of the warp, are said to dissipate into the warp upon death, only to be capable of re-manifesting at a later point in time. While this latter idea would appear to debunk the demon possibility, it is worth noting that certain other types of demonic entity can be created through a similar process. The demons known as plague bearers, for example, are created whenever a mortal being dies from a disease known as Nurgle's Rot. While some sources maintain that such demons are birthed from embryonic pods that are nurtured by the dying souls of those who succumb to the rot, others, such as the novel Dark Imperium, have shown mortals physically transforming into plague bearers during the later stages of infection, as documented within the following passage. Varens was racked with sudden burning pain. Lesions opened on his skin, allowing the vermin breeding inside him to fall softly to the earth. His belly distended, his fingers twisted, his back hunched, his eyes moistened and became soft as part-cooked eggs, his cheeks melted like wax in a fire, reforming his features. His skull felt like it was trying to burst itself in two. Relief came suddenly, 
when a rotting, stubby horn emerged slowly through his forehead and twisted upwards. The pain got worse, but it didn't bother him any longer. He giggled at it. The thing that had been Varen's opened a single eye upon a blighted world. All of the seven chosen were marked by Nurgle in their own way. By obvious trauma, minor scratch or unnoticed wound, Varen's own mark had been a flybite, dismissed in a moment. How bountiful his new lord was. The thing was pleased at the honor, and the last of Varen's died under its pleasure. As such, there is a distinct possibility that both the contagion and demon hypotheses are linked, with the disease effectively transforming those that succumb to it into demonic entities. But another possibility regarding the Legion of the Damned is that they are neither demons nor space marines that have become afflicted with some contagion, but are instead the restless souls or ghosts of fallen Astartes that continue to serve the Emperor after death. One of the main pieces of evidence for this particular hypothesis comes from the novel The Chapter's Jew, when the Legion would come to the aid of the Ultramarine's fourth company captain, Uriel Ventris. One such damned legionnaire, despite his armor being partially blackened and wreathed in etheric flame, still retained traces of his former identity. While described as being barely legible, Ventris would note that the spectral warrior bore the Ultima symbol of the Ultramarines upon his pauldron. Some have even speculated that this particular legionary was none other than Remus Ventanus, who served as captain of the Ultramarine's Fourth Company during the course of the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy. The idea that the Legion of the Damned are the ghosts of slain Astartes is also supported within the novel Master of Mankind, as during his battle against a vast demonic horde led by the demon Drachnien, the Emperor would summon a legion of ghostly warriors to aid him, whose description is eerily similar to that of the Legion of the Damned, as shown in the following passage. Shapes raged in the flames, shadows and suggestions doing battle with the demons, their fiery forms indistinct and ever-changing. The fireborn avatars of Fallen 10,000, knee-deep in psychic fire and thrusting with lances of flame. The silhouettes of space marines, the betrayed dead of Istvan bearing axes and blades and claws, half-seen sigils of slaughtered legions obscured by the ash of their blackened armor. This is strongly implied to be, in essence, a prototype version of the Legion of the Damned as these ghostly warriors are both wreathed in flame and clad in blackened armor, much like the warriors of the Legion itself in the modern era. This would also appear to suggest that, while the Firehawks may have become transformed into damned legionnaires, they would have been far from the only warriors to have done so. Perhaps the truth is some combination of all these previously mentioned hypotheses. Perhaps the Legion's warriors are formed from the spirits of slain space marines from across countless legions and chapters who died unceremoniously, or as a result of treachery, and therefore refused to rest at peace, only for the godlike power of the Emperor himself to transform them into the type of warp entities they are now, that they could be reborn into the Legions of the Damned as one of his eternal servants. Alternatively, perhaps the truth regarding just what the Legion truly is, is something else entirely with no connection to any of the previously mentioned hypotheses. Ultimately, we may never know for certain. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. And as ever, Ave Imperator, Gloria in Excelsis Terra.